here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I need to calculate the mass of an aluminum block right off the bat. That's my unknown. So I'm going to go ahead and circle it, and I'm going to write M of AL equals question mark. So known values, not mass. Mass is an unknown value, right? Uh, it's at 80 degrees, and so I'm going to call that my temperature initial of the aluminum is 80.0 degrees Celsius. Right, so that's a known value. Temperature initial of aluminum is 80 degrees Celsius. It's placed in one liter or one kilogram of water. Right, so one kilogram of water that's the mass of the water, one kilogram. So over here, known value, I'm going to say mass of water is one kilogram. And the water is 25 degrees Celsius. So the temperature initial of the water is 25 degrees Celsius. And that is 25.0. That's kind of hard to see. I apologize. That is a known value of water. So temperature initial water, 25.0 degrees Celsius. If the final temperature becomes 30 degrees Celsius, so temperature final is 30 degrees Celsius. That's a known value. Temperature final, 30.0 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of aluminum is 900. So CP of aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And the specific heat capacity of water, so CP of water is 4184 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. All right. Uh, so I'm going to write here, CP of aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And I'm going to write down here, CP of water is 4184 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. Now I'm at a st sticking point, And this is where you guys in your heads have to say, what formula makes sense? What formula makes sense? Well, I have temperatures. I have specific heat capacities. I have uh, masses. And if you go back to your sheet where you wrote them all down, the only one that makes sense is this Q formula. Right? So probably going to use the Q formula. And so the equation I'm going to write is Q equals MCP delta T. But there's a hint in there too, right? Why do I have two of everything? Why two of the variables? Right? And the reason is, is because if you draw yourself a picture of what's happening here, see what is happening here. You have a block that's placed into a water bath, right? And that block, it's hot. It's real hot. And the water, it's kind of cold, right? It's only 25 degrees Celsius to the aluminum block that's 80 degrees Celsius. What happens when I put those two together and wait a long time? You'll remember... Uh, we talked about thermal equilibrium. Over time, they reach a thermal equilibrium. And they tell me the temperature final is 30 degrees Celsius. Is that the equilibrium? Yeah, 25 goes up. The water gets warmer. The aluminum block gets colder. So that's that thermal equilibrium. Equal being the key hint there, right? Because when we're talking about equilibrium, we need to remember that the energy transfer of the water is going to be equal to the energy transfer of the aluminum. What do I mean by that? Energy can't be created or destroyed, right? So when I put these two together, they reach an equilibrium. What the water gains, right, because it goes from hot to cold, 
So the, the heat from the aluminum goes to the water. What the water gains is what the aluminum loses. It's the same amount of energy transferred, right? From one to the other. So I can say that they're equal. And I can have an even better formula that says, um, says the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water times the change in temperature of the water is equal to the mass of the aluminum times the specific heat capacity of the aluminum times the change in temperature of the aluminum. Okay? Kind of messes me up because I have temperatures. I don't have a change in temperature. What happens? The change in temperature of water. The water goes from what to what? It goes from 25 to 30. So 30 degrees minus 25 degrees Celsius. That's a change in temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, right? And what about the aluminum? The aluminum goes from 90 degrees Celsius down to 30 degrees Celsius, a change in temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. All right. Now we're cooking with aluminum. My dad always says cooking with oil, but we'll go with aluminum on this one. Start plugging in what we got. We got one kilogram of water. We've got 418. Guys, turn off your lights. Sorry, that doesn't need to be in the video. Turn the lights off for the testing thing. 4184 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And then times 5 degrees Celsius equals the mass of the aluminum. I don't know. That's the unknown. That's what I'm solving for. It's a good thing it's in here times the specific heat capacity of aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius times the change in temperature of aluminum, which is 60 degrees Celsius, right? 90 minus 30. Oops. Why'd you guys write, let me write 90. This is why you always check your work is 80 degrees, right? I think 80 degrees, 80 minus 30 is not 60. It's 50. It's important to check your work as you go. Otherwise, you make the mistakes that you got to fix, and it takes a lot longer to fix them. PEMDAS, parentheses, none. Exponents, none. Multiplication, lots of it. 1 times 4184 times 5. I'm going to do that whole thing in my calculator all at once. I don't know where I left my calculator. That's annoying. Um... I think it is 2920. Oh, there it is, right under there. All right. So uh, 1 times anything is itself. So I could just do 4184 times 5. I got 20,920. Kilograms cancel out. Degrees Celsius cancel out. That leaves it as joules, right? Equals the mass of the aluminum times 900 times 50 is 45,000 and the degree Celsius cancels joules per kilogram, right? Now it's just algebra. Well, it was just algebra after I plugged in too. The old plug and chug is what they like to call that one. And we're gonna just continue that. I gotta get the mass of aluminum, my unknown by itself. It's being multiplied, so I have to divide. I divide by 45,000 joules per kilogram. And if I do it to the right side, I got to do it to the left side. 45,000 joules per kilogram. The, uh, these cancel out. It just leaves the mass of aluminum. And that's going to be equal to, I got to do the algebra here, 2920, or the division, I should say, divided by 45,000. And that gives me zero point. Four, six, four, eight, repeating, and the joules cancel out, so it leaves my answer in kilograms. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, punch that like button, subscribe below, and if you've got questions, hit me up in the chat. Peace.